Good afternoon. My name is Ha Xiao. I don't know whether my pronunciation is, uh, is correct. Uh, it's my great honor to be invited by the steering committee to give this presentation to my dearest uh, audience uh, in Seoul, in Korea. And um, before I give my presentation, uh, just remind me that uh, President Park just visited China uh, last week. And uh, she brought a uh, very big delegations with a lot of businessmen to China. So I have an imagination or I have a dream in the future maybe. When she came, come to China again, she will bring a delegation of uh, social enterprises. So all of you can be part of that delegation. So that will be a great success of social enterprises. So I would like to give a brief uh, introduction or presentation about China's social enterprise development. And I will give a brief um, history about social uh, development in China and the current situation of social enterprises in China and what's the future in the, in the, in the next. First of all, uh, you may all know that China is a very unique society, especially after 1949, the founding of the People's Republic of China. So at that period, about 30 years, actually in China we only have a one circle. So we call it one circle society, rather it's a three circle society. So almost everything related to the government, uh, either the central government or the local government. So we have uh, business sectors within the government sectors. You all know now the term is called SOE, which is uh, state-owned enterprises. But the term has been changed. At that time, the term was state-run organization. So you can know the difference between uh, that, that, that term. And also the social sectors is also within the sector of government, such as when I was a young boy, um, so I went to the school of, of government. Actually, I went to the school of a ministry. So each ministry or each unit, they have their hospital, they have their school, they have their kindergartens. So there's no need to have a separate sectors. So it's quite simple structure and uh, it worked well at that time. But since 19, late 1970s, you all know that China opened, opened its door and started its economic reform at that time. So after that, China's economy has, has been uh, experienced a booming uh, period uh, for almost 30 years. And during the past 30 years, almost everything has changed. The only thing has not changed is we only have one ruling party, which is the Communist Party, but almost everything has been, has been changed. So we firstly, we found out that uh, the second circle, uh, second sectors has been divided or separated from the government sector, which is the business sectors. Um, within the business sectors, we still have uh, two parts. One is a very strong part, is uh, SOE, the state-owned enterprises. And the second part is private enterprises sector. Um, even the SOE, the social and uh, 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 the state-owned enterprises, uh, the, uh, in terms of their governance, in terms of their structure, is more market-oriented rather than government-oriented. And uh, also, the, the we see a growing of social sectors uh, after mid 1990s. So we started also from government-owned or government-run. Uh, social organizations, such as a lot of public fundraising organizations or foundations are run and uh, owned by the government. But uh, slightly, we have a, a lot of uh, private social organizations, we call it private non-profit organizations, uh, occurred in China uh, since, 19, uh, since mid-1990s. So then, if we're talking about social enterprises. Uh, actually in China, no, now we have not an a, a official terminology of social enterprises and we don't have an official uh, definition about social enterprises. But in terms of non-profit sector or social sector, 
since late 1970s, we do have uh, three categories of uh, that sector. The first category is, uh, 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 I came from uh, the social organizations. So what's these social organ organizations? This is the only uh, category can allow membership, which is if you set up a social organization, you can have your uh, uh, members. So let's say uh, the industrial associations, such as the bankers' associations, women's as or interest group associations, such as women's associations, uh, youth associations, uh, those uh, belong to social organizations. And the second, degree, uh, sec second uh, uh, category is foundations. Uh, people on, all know foundations. But within that category, we also have two kinds. Uh, one is uh, we call pub public foundations, uh, which uh, organized by the government, and they can do fundraisings and private foundations. The difference between these two uh, foundations, one is they can do, do to do public fundraising, but the private foundation, uh, you have to have an uh, endowment before you set up uh, as a foundation. And the last one is not easy to explain and not easy to um, to understand. Uh, actually, should be I should call it a private and not for uh, not profit driven business. It's kind of business, but it's not bus uh, a profit driven. So it seems like it's more close to the definition of social enterprises, but it's more broader, such as private schools. If you want to build a, uh, build a school or run a school, so it goes into this category. Or you want to build a private hospital, so it goes to, into this category. Uh, category, and also including research centers, think tanks, all those belong to this uh, category. But there are some mixtures, uh, because you can register as a nonprofit, and also you can register as a commercial. So that's uh, uh, slightly di different. Um, in the past, um, I, I, later I will introduce how we can register as a social organizations as, uh, uh, an institution institutions. But because of that system, um, it's not really easy for individuals or private to set up uh, social organizations. So we have another official categories of social organizations or official category of nonprofit organizations. People, people do charities or people do nonprofit, uh, nonprofit uh, programs, but they register as a commercial business. So they pay tax and they hire people as the commercial business uh, they, 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 they do. So it's, um, it's a very special category in, in China. And uh, for the recent couple of years, the government in some regions, or in some cities, they realized that their group of people, they are doing this kind of job. So they promise to give them uh, tax deductions. So, but it's case by case. So I call it unofficial category under these uh, social sectors. So, just to see uh, what's the size of the social sector uh, currently. Uh, this is some of the figures of uh, these two years. And I give you the, the, the figures of the year of, uh, of, um, of uh, this uh, last year. Uh, for the social organizations, we have about 270,000 uh, in terms of uh, quantitative. And uh, for the uh, non-business, which I call it uh, the private and uh, uh, not uh, profit-driven uh, profit uh, business, is about 230,000 uh, in numbers. And uh, the foundations, we see a very fast growth in the past 30 years from nothing, from zero to 3,000 foundations. Among the 3,000 foundations, half of them are private foundations, which, which means half of them are established by private corporate or private families which have endowments. And uh, most of the funding uh, support to social uh, enterprises, are f I mean some of the uh, of funding resources are from the private foundations. Uh, not many public fundraising uh, foundations 
they will support social enterprises. And uh, the growth rate of those social sectors remain the same as our economy growth uh, during the past 30 years. Uh, it's more or less about 10% each year. So you can see we remain the same page uh, with the economy, econ economic development. So the percentage of the three categories, I cannot add the fourth one, the, 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 the one un unofficial one, because we don't have the figures. Uh, a lot they register as a commercial business, so, but we don't have the figures. So we only have these th three official uh, categories of social uh, sectors. Uh, so the largest one is the social organizations take 54%, uh, and uh, the private non-business institute take uh, 45%. And the foundation take one percent, although only quantitatively only take one percent, but the role of the foundation is more important in current situation. They are not only provide fundings to other NGOs or to social enterprises, but also they are take leading roles in terms of to see what's the vision in the future of social sectors development in China. In terms of the registration and the administration, I would say in the past 30 years, our administration has changed slightly and gradually. It become more and more open for individuals and private to set up social organizations. Um, but until today, the regulation is still very restricted. Um, actually, you have to, if you want to register as a social organization, the first step, you have to uh, go to register, enter the civil the Ministry of Civil Affairs in the national level. And in the local level, you have to go to the uh, Department of Civil Affairs in the provincial level and in, in, the, in, the, in the city level. But this is only the first step or first criteria. But the most important thing is you have to find a mother-in-law. We call it mother-in-law because it's much easier for you to understand why we call it mother-in-law. Uh, let me take an example. If you want to create it, uh, Nonprofit organizations or social enterprise, enterprise related to education, you have to talk to the Ministry of Education and got their approval. Without the Ministry of Education, you cannot set up education related social enterprises or social uh, organ organizations. Um, in the local level, it's the same. You have to talk to education administrations, uh, but it become more open open much more easy and easy. I, I know that uh, during the past couple of years, the government in different uh, levels have talking about redraft the, the law on social organizations registration. Probably by the end of this year, um, one category uh, will be open for all citizens to, 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 to register without that mother-in-law. And in the next couple of years, all the categories, including foundations, including social organizations, including the non-business institutes, uh, could register much easier without the mother-in-law. But currently, um, we still have this, we call double uh, administration or double management. So the government, uh, because the next slide, I will talk a little bit about our new challenges in China and new challenge in, in our society. So that's uh, give a huge pressure to the government to um, shift their power or shift their responsibility to business se sector as well as to the social s sector. So now the government in the central level as well as in the local level, they have their own new thinkings and they think about new models how to, how to, how to uh, administrate and manage the social sectors. So I call it learning by doing because they, they are learning some issues they cannot deal with by themselves. They have to work together with other sectors. What's the new challenges? I believe uh, most of the challenges you see on the slide, uh, most of the countries, not only in, Asia, in, in East Asia, but in the rest of the world, uh, uh, especially uh, during their social transformation, they will, uh, they will, fa they will face up. The first, the first one, I, I, I will not go one by one, but uh, uh, I pick up uh, some of the key areas, such as the first one, 
the urbanization movement. It's a huge process, and and uh, it's it's a huge uh, uh, movement uh, in China. We ever we ever never seen in the history of, of China. Probably is the large largest uh, uh, people moving from rural areas to urban areas in the, in, the, in the history. Over the past 30 years, we have over billions of people. They are moving from rural areas to urban areas. Uh, you can see in Beijing, Beijing is a big city. Uh, we used to have only less than 10 million population. It's al already very big, but now we have a population is almost about 30 million population. With such a big city, there's a lot of problems, such as in terms of the migrant workers, because every year we have millions of migrant workers. They came from rural areas to urban areas to make their life. And uh, the education for their children is, 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 is a problem, because according to the traditional way, uh, the children have to go to school in local community. When they go with their parents to go to urban areas, the urban areas has no, had no responsibility to take care of their children. So they have to go back to their local community, but they couldn't because that's a, that's a big social uh, problem. What's the health care service for the migrant workers? Um, those are the issues uh, related to urbanizations happened uh, in the past 30 years. And it become serious and serious nowadays in China. So the government had realized they should work together with social sectors, with the local communities, and with the business to solve those um, problems. And also, the second, the, the, the senior people. Um, China has 1.3 billion population, the largest in the, in the world. And uh, for some of the countries, especially like Korean, uh, you become rich, you become uh, wealthy, then you become a society of senior people. But in China, we are on the opposite. We become senior, then we haven't become rich. Um, so that's, that's really, really a very difficult uh, problem for us. How to deal with that? Uh, also, we have another problem is, uh, you know, during the past 30 years, we have a policy in China is one child policy. So every family can only have one child. Uh, so family plan, uh, which means I calculate my, my mathematics is not good, but I, I calculate uh, if there's one child in the future, he or she should support uh, four parents because uh, if he got married, so he or she should support five parents. And now the people become quite long time, uh, long life. And uh, there's probably will be eight grandparents there. So one child has to make money to support four parents, eight grandparents. You can imagine what's the pressure to, to our children in the, in the future. So the aging issue, uh, the senior people issue, is not only an issue uh, related to senior people. It's an issue related to everyone in, in, in our country. And we also have um, a lot of other issues, such as disabled, those uh, education, social security, uh, those, um, those, those uh, uh, problems. Uh, but there are a couple of uh, uh, some others, such as climate change. We cannot solve climate change by each individual sectors, environmental issues. We cannot solve that problems by only the government or the social sectors. And uh, especially, you may heard about in China, there is one very serious issue is the food safety. So that's another very uh, serious uh, problems. And also financial issues, such as the, our uh, uh, farmers and our uh, small business is difficult for them to get loans from uh, from the bank. How we can solve that problems? Such as there is someone they learned from Dr. Yunus from uh, uh, Bangladesh. They bring micro credit the programs to to China. Now it's quite good. Work quite good. I think that's a kind of uh, social enterprises uh, in in China. So this is only give you a sense that's the new challenges we are facing currently in China. But also we see the new trend. The, the, the trend is because of the government, uh, both the government and the social sectors and the business sectors, we see the needs to change, um, to change the structure, to change, to shift the power between, uh, among different, uh, different sectors. 
So uh, in the central level, I think the government, the major responsibility of the central government is to uh, re-identify uh, the responsibility between the three, among the three sectors um, uh, and how they can work t together. At the local level, I think uh, the local government, what they are doing now is to try different ways to tackling different issues because China is big and China, uh, our coastal areas in the east part is quite developed, uh, just like in Korea we see everywhere. But in the west part, uh, we have a lot of poverty stricken, we have not a lot, but some poverty stricken areas, the gap uh, become larger and larger. So. Uh, different company, uh, dif different government, they are dealing with different issues. But uh, now, uh, many government, they are thinking about new ways and new models and uh, in the different levels to, to tackling uh, different, different issues. Uh, there are some uh, new trends, um, especially in some certain, uh, I mean, developed areas, such as in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangdong, those uh, municipal cities with people more than uh, at least 10 million populations. So they started to think about new ways. Because we just mentioned all those challenges we are facing cannot be solved by uh, any individual sectors. So for the government, they have created a new way, which is in some cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, they created a committee called Working Committee on Social Issues which is to dealing with those link, the, the issues linked uh, to get together. As I mentioned before, uh, if you are, you, crea you are creating a uh, social sector on education, so you have to report to the Ministry of Education. But now currently, if you want to solve the education problem of the migrant workers, I think that's not a responsibility or that could not be solved by edu Ministry of Education itself. So that's why they created this committee, they call it Working Committee on Social Issues. So the responsibility of the role of the committee is try first to coordinate the responsibilities and efforts among different government agencies, such as among education, among employment, uh, etc. And also they try to leverage different resources from different organizations or different sectors, such as they get some money from the government budget, and also they get some money from the business sectors to uh, help the social enterprises or social innovations uh, to this regard. Uh, later, I will give an example, a case about Shanghai Social Enterprise Incubator, and uh, their initial funding are from Shanghai Working Committee on Social Issues, as well as Shanghai Department of Civil, Civil Affairs. Where are they budget from? Their budget actually from the lottery. You know, you know lottery. So uh, they have lottery fund. So they, they provide 10 million Chinese yuan to initiate that uh, incubator. You can see the resources um, uh, allocated to support that movement. Uh, so I, 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 I probably have already uh, covered this uh, slide because uh, we need new models, we need new resources. And especially, I think there's one thing I want to emphasize is the talent, the, the people who want to do social enterprises. In the past 30 years, we have uh, some people, they have their um, enthusiasm to do nonprofit job, uh, but most of them become older and older uh, because if you're working, in China, if you're working for non-profit sector, which means you cannot uh, return to business sector or to the government sector. It's making you very difficult in terms of uh, uh, the salaries and the income is not comparable to those two uh, sectors. Um, but for social enterprises, I think attractive, uh, attract more and more young people, especially people uh, within the universities. Uh, one thing is because of the uh, the pressure on employment. So more and people, they want, they want to find new opportunities there. Secondly, uh, I believe most of the young people, they have their enthusiasm on social issues. But the other thing is they, they also care about their salary. They also care about their income. So they want to use a more commercial way 
to do to solve social problems. So that's give a lot of rooms, uh, give a lot of uh, uh, places for young people uh, to create their own social enter enterprises. And also, there's uh, build a new relations between business and uh, NGOs, and nonprofit, and new resources. Such as we have in China, we have uh, uh, a lot of not a lot some venture philanthropies. Just in Singapore, uh, uh, in Asia, we have the AVPN, and uh, we also have the LGT. Those are from outside China, but within China, we also have some families. They want to they want to establish venture venture philanthropy to sub support social enterprises on, on the one hand and on the other hand to see a long-term return from that investment. So it's, an, it's, an, it's a probably a new way. Okay. Um, I just give uh, some uh, 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 very quick history uh, uh, background information about social development in China. And uh, I will give very quickly about two cases. And those cases, uh, probably you can log on to website and find those cases quite famous in China. One is the Shanghai Social Enterprise Incubator, started uh, six or seven years, years ago. And it built up a quite new relationship between government and uh, social enterprises and, and NGO. Uh, the leader of this NGO, they, uh, uh, they got support from Shanghai uh, Ministry of Civil Affairs. And uh, what the civil, the, the civil affair gave, gave to them, one is a space. The space is a factory. The factory have over 30, uh, uh, over uh, 3,000 square meters uh, uh, factory. Um, it's a state-owned factory, but uh, without, any, uh, without any profit anymore. So they closed down that, that, that factory. So they gave that space to the incubator. This is first thing. And second thing, they gave uh, 10 million RMB, uh, Chinese yuan, to that incubator. So for three years, the social enterprise, they can, for, for, the, for all the social entrepreneurs and social enterprises in Shanghai, they can apply f for, for, for a room within that factory, within that incub in incubator. It's the first case in China that quite successful. Uh, it's, we, we call it a new, uh, 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 private and, pu uh, and public partnership uh, in, 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 in China. So the, uh, the name of that uh, incubator is called MPI, which is non-profit incubator. But now they change to social enterprise in, in, in incubator, uh, uh, incubator. And uh, we see, although only six or seven years, we see the change of that incubator. The firstly, they are only uh, just act as a property leasing. So they have the land, they have the space, they have the money, so they will lease that space to the social organizations or social enterprises without any uh, payings. But when the social enterprises, they enter uh, that incubator, they found out they really, what they really need, they really need is capacity building, the skills, the business skills. So they set up their capacity building programs. And then they lack of funding, so they try to get more fundings uh, uh, they, they, they build up their philanthropy, venture philanthropy fund in Shanghai to support those who needed uh, uh, fundings. So we can see the involution of that incubators. Uh, they uh, turn it from a physical incubator to uh, both physical and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and virtually incubator to the, to the social enterprises. So I just mentioned one lesson we learned is uh, they from a, a physical provider to a more comprehensive uh, service provider to the social enterprises. The second lesson uh, they learned is there are a lot of uh, creativities, uh, uh, programs they receive in, in the incubator. Um, but in terms of sustainability, I think it's an important issue they have to deal with in the next couple of years because government sponsorship, government funding will be end uh, in about three years. So what's the next? I think that's the, that's the issue for, for this uh, incubator. This is the first case. And the second case um, uh, is, is also quite similar, but uh, it's from the perspective of, of business sector. Uh, this is a friend of mine. He run an institute. That in institute registered as a commercial 
uh, company. So they set up an incubator for business, uh, small business or medium business, uh, who have the uh, enthusiasm about social enterprises. So uh, compared to the first case, the first case is more physical oriented, but this case is more virtually oriented. They mainly provide uh, uh, provide uh, training programs for the social entrepreneurs uh, uh, in, 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 in this field. So I won't uh, talk more about these uh, cases. Um, before I talking about what's the, what's the future of social enterprises in, in, in China, uh, I want to give more in, uh, 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 cases about successful, although very small scale, but very successful uh, social enterprises in China. Uh, such as I mentioned before, uh, to some of our friends here, uh, in the college level, within campus, actually there are quite uh, some very successful social enterprises cases. One very good example is in some universities in campus, they have coffee shop for students. The coffee shop is set up uh, for the poor students, uh, 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 the students coming from the poverty-stricken areas in China they can apply for the opportunity to work in a coffee shop uh, within the campus. So by doing that, one, they can make their money to pay their tuition. Secondly, they can learn business skills for their, for their future. So this is a quite successful, although very small, quite successful cases. Uh, similarly, they have a second-hand book stores in many universities. Those are run by students itself, so it's quite similar. And also, uh, within campus, uh, these, these couple of years, we have a lot of uh, social business competitions. So a lot of people, a lot of students, they participate in uh, social business competitions. And one story is um, one of the stu students, they earn one million Chinese yuan of that competition. So he decided not to go to any big companies, but create his own social enterprises. So that's only one uh, example. Uh, another very successful or quite successful cases is in South China, in Shenzhen. Uh, some uh, disabled people, they create their own software workshop uh, because there's a strength. They found the strength, advantage of disabled people is they much focus and much concentrated to certain things, although they cannot move freely. So they teach, uh, they, they, they invited uh, teachers and professors to teach them how to um, uh, produce uh, softwares. So now they become a major uh, software producer in, in Shenzhen. So they make a lot of money for those uh, uh, dis disabled people. So those are uh, some cases about successful, although small, but quite uh, potential uh, uh, social enterprises in China. Then what's the future? Um, uh, just talk about a joke. Uh, whenever I talk to young people or the social entrepreneurs in China, I always said, you never call yourself social entrepreneurs. You never call yourself social enterprises. Why? Because there are, we are experiencing a crisis of uh, charity and philanthropy in China because of certain corruptions uh, in China. So whenever you say you are a social entrepreneur, they said you want to make money from us uh, rather than you want to, to, good, to do good things for the society. So we are facing a quite uh, difficult uh, period and timing in, in China. So whenever I talk to our audience, I said, uh, because there's a no definition, there's no categories about social enterprise. Whatever you register, you register as a non-profit, you register as a commercial, you have to pay tax as the same as the commercial. But if you call yourself social enterprise, people will see, will, will think you are a saint. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are a saint. I don't know whether this, uh, this is the term. So they will give you a very high standard. Uh, why not? Why? Why you are going to do that? So just do as a normal business do. So this is what I'm, my recommendations to my colleagues back in China. But uh, actually in the future, I, I see there will be uh, quite big potentials and opportunities for social enterprises and uh, 
social business. One is we see all those new challenges and all those need, all those needs, social social needs. So I think we should do that from both sides, from the local, from the NGO side. I think we should encourage more people, uh, the local based, community based organizations should be encouraged. And from the government side, I think uh, we should encourage government to have new policies, new regulations, and new ways to encourage those social entrepreneurs and social enterprises. So that's my uh, uh, presentation. Hope it's helpful for you to understand the situation in China. Thank you. Uh,还是蛮有趣的。啊,我觉得一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一个一